From the turn of the century, well into the Roaring Twenties, this was the place where New York elites would build their lavish private estates. And if you've ever seen The Great Gatsby, you'll know it was a land of opulent affairs, and one that served as the backdrop to this legendary tale. Welcome to Schmancy, the place where we talk all things rich, exclusive, and fancy Schmancy. Today, we are taking you to the North Shore, an area known for its extreme wealth, its jazz era decadence, and palatial European style estates. Located on the northern coast of New York's Long Island, directly off the Long Island Sound, the North Shore exploded into affluence at the turn of the 20th century, hence earning it a more fashionable reputation as the Gold Coast. Of the 500 or so grand mansions that were built during this prosperous era, only a third of them still stand today. And if you've got a few minutes to spare, you're welcome to join us on our tour of the most extravagant, most remarkable mansions in this most majestic section of Long Island. As we make stops in filthy rich towns like Brookville, Old Westbury, Sands Point, and the like, you'll be taken back to a bygone world where opulence, prominence, and elegance seem to be all that mattered. So, without further ado, here are the top 15 Gold Coast mansions of Long Island. Number 1. Eagle's Nest Estate. This 43-acre estate with stunning waterfront views, was constructed in three installments from 1910 through 1936. It was built as a summer residence for William K. Vanderbilt II, the son of William K. Vanderbilt I, and Alva. As a well-traveled man, and a collector of all types of marine specimens, natural history, and cultural artifacts, he also used the property as his own personal museum. Hence in addition to the 24-room Spanish Revival Mansion, there is a curator's cottage, a seaplane hangar, and a boathouse on the property. Upon his death, Vanderbilt deeded the property to Nassau County to be used as a public museum. Today, it is known as the Vanderbilt Museum and Planetarium, featuring gorgeous landscaping, mansion tours, museum tours, exhibitions, an observatory, educational programs, holiday events, shows, and much more. Number 2. Winfield Hall. Completed in 1915, this is the only old marble mansion left standing on Long Island. Otherwise known as the Woolworth Mansion, the 56-room Italian Renaissance Palace was built for the five-and-dime retailer himself, Frank Winfield Woolworth and his family. Woolworth, who believed himself to be the living reincarnation of Napoleon Bonaparte, outfitted his home with all sorts of flamboyant details and all sorts of eccentricities relating to the French Emperor. This included a marble replica of the Arc de Triomphe at the estate's entrance, walking around the mansion in some of the late emperor's uniforms, as well as sleeping in a bedroom decorated in the mirror image of Napoleon's own bedroom, with furnishings that even belonged to him. Sadly, Woolworth died only four years after the mansion's completion in 1919, and for a period of time the home was occupied by a charm and business school. Allegedly, some of the students held seances in the mansion that was already reported to be haunted by a woman in blue. Thus making matters worse, the haunted mansion was recently sold for a mere $8.25 million in 2022, to an undisclosed buyer. Number 3. Co Hall. This 67-room mansion sits on a 400-acre estate named Planting Fields. Completed in 1921, in the Tudor Revival style for business executive William Robertson Co. and his wife Mary, it was the second home built on the property, as the original had burned to the ground. The couple who both shared a love of horticulture, turned the estate into a botanical marvel, featuring unique species of trees and flowers, multiple gardens, wooded paths, greenhouses, pools, a tea house, and so much more. Mrs. Co. died prematurely in 1924, and her husband eventually deeded the home to the state of New York, in 1949. For a short period, it was used as a temporary campus for Stony Brook University. Today, the property is known as Planting Fields Arboretum State Historic Park, where you can tour Cohall's beautifully decorated rooms, attend events, stroll through the estate's formal gardens, or just go for a hike in the woods. Number 4. The Manor. This pristine brick Georgian revival mansion was built for John and Ruth Pratt, of the prominent Pratt family. The Pratt family are known as pioneers of the U.S. oil industry, founders of Pratt Institute in Brooklyn, as well as the Pratt School of Naval Architecture and Marine Engineering, at MIT. Now, as for the owners of this 55-acre estate, John was an attorney and an executive with Standard Oil Company. Ruth was the first Republican congresswoman from the state of New York. The estate remained in the family until 1965, when Ruth passed away. In 1967, the Harrison Conference Center purchased the mansion, and renovated it into a hotel and conference center. Today, it is known as the mansion at Glen Cove, 
a luxurious space for weddings, conferences, a relaxing weekend by the pool, or just Sunday brunch. It is also another one of those mansions that had starring roles in several Hollywood movies and TV shows, such as Sabrina and Royal Pains. Number 5. The Brays. Speaking of the Pratt family, right next door is another magnificent structure also previously owned by another member. This time by John's brother, Herbert Lee Pratt, who at some point presided over Standard Oil of New York. The Jacobean Tudor-style mansion was built in 1912 atop of three adjoining terraces overlooking the Long Island Sound. This was the second mansion built on the property, as the couple grew tired of their 1902 mansion, and tore it down to accommodate their more refined tastes only ten years later. After Pratt's death in 1945, the property was acquired by the Webb Institute of Naval Architecture, who renovated it for use as its campus. Today, the Brays is still home to the elite college, offering full tuition and guaranteed job placement. Number 6. Wellen. Okay. We have one more Pratt brother mansion for you. This one is another Georgian revival built for another standard oil executive, Harold Irving Pratt. Built in 1906, it was a private residence inhabited by Pratt and his wife Harriet until 1969, the year she died. The property then passed on to Nassau County, who renamed it Welland Preserve County Park, and left it vacant for several decades. In the 90s, the mansion was restored in order to house the Holocaust Memorial and Tolerance Center of Nassau County. However the county ran out of money and was unable to restore the remainder of the buildings. Today, you can visit the museum for tours and educational programs. And while you're at it, you're welcome to tour the Children's Memorial Garden, as well as hike throughout the property to experience its wooded paths, a private beach, and the old abandoned buildings of which today are proudly covered in graffiti. There are several more Pratt family mansions within close proximity to this one, but we won't cover them on this video. After all, we didn't want to bore you with too many Pratt mansions. However, if you're still interested, you're welcome to research them, and go off on your own exploration. Moving on, we have number 7. Ohika Castle. At 109,000 square feet and 127 rooms, Ohika Castle comes in as America's second largest private home, next to Biltmore. Some call it the Versailles of New York, others call it a huge inspiration for F. Scott Fitzgerald's famous novel, The Great Gatsby. This majestic French-style chateau was built by investment banker Otto Hermann Kahn between 1914 and 1919 as a summer home. The name Ohika is actually an acronym using the first several letters of each part of his name. Khan died in 1934, and after being used as a retreat for sanitation workers, a military academy, and sitting neglected for some time, the castle was purchased by developer Gary Melius in 1984, who spent $40 million restoring it back to perfection. Today, it is a luxury hotel boasting 32 guest suites, as well as a popular wedding venue for uber-rich socialites and dignitaries. In addition to being a unique backdrop for photo shoots, television series, and films, the estate offers fine dining options and historic tours of the entire property. Number 8. Sefton Manor. This 34-room Tudor revival overlooking the Long Island Sound was completed in 1922 for advertising executive Robert Leftwich Dodge and cosmetics heiress Lillian Sefton Dodge. Also known as Mill Neck Manor, some special features include a 500-year-old front door and a series of stained glass windows depicting Shakespeare's plays. In 1949, the family sold the mansion and its 73 acres of gardens and woodland to Lutheran Friends of the Deaf, the founding organization for Mill Neck Manor School for the Deaf. The home is still owned by the school today. However, classes have moved to more modern buildings on the campus, and the organization has renovated the mansion to return it as close to its original condition as possible. Though still maintained, today the home sits empty, with the exception of the living room that the school uses for a chapel, as well as tours that are open to the public once a month. Number 9. Sagamore Hill. This 23-room home is a National Historic Site, as it was the Theodore Roosevelt family home. Completed in 1887, it remained the 26th president's primary home, until his death in 1919. The shingle-style Queen Anne Victorian became known as the Summer White House during the seven summers he spent there as president, and played host to numerous foreign dignitaries, where peace talks were held, that helped draw an end to the Russo-Japanese War. The home came with multiple sitting rooms, and offices to display his vast collection of souvenirs, a large porch, a working farm, and an indoor toilet, which was considered a treat at the time. Today, Sagamore Hill sits intact with its original decor and furnishings, and operates as a museum, offering guided tours for a small fee, on a reservation basis. 
However, the grounds are open free to the public and includes meandering paths, a private beach, and a separate museum chronicling the life and career of the president. Number 10. Old Westbury Gardens. This was the estate of businessman John Schaefer Phipps, an heir to the Phipps family fortune. Completed in 1906, the 23-room Carolean revival mansion known as Westbury House was built as a wedding gift for Phipps' bride Margarita. The property was converted into a museum home in 1959, and today you are welcome to explore both the house, furnished with antiques and artwork, as well as its grounds, which include 200 acres of some of the most beautiful gardens, wooded paths, ponds, and lakes scattered throughout. The museum is also host to a variety of fun family events, classes, exhibitions, wedding photography, and has been the backdrop to multiple Hollywood films, such as Age of Innocence, Love Story, and Cruel Intentions. Number 11. Hempstead House. This enormous medieval-looking structure is actually the centerpiece of Sands Point Preserve, a magnificent 216-acre park. Hempstead House was built for Howard Gould in 1912, as a replica of Kilkenny Castle in Ireland. The 40-room English Tudor castle was a replacement for a smaller castle built earlier on the estate. One that Gould just never quite liked. So he built a new one, and relegated the first to be used as stables and servants' quarters. Gould sold the property to Daniel Guggenheim in 1917, and left for Europe. The Guggenheims would eventually build two more mansions on the estate, and for a time it was known as the Guggenheim Estate. Owned by Nassau County today, and maintained by the Sands Point Preserve Conservancy, the park offers year-round educational programs, cultural programs, mansion tours, mansion rentals, nature walks, and the plethora of other fun activities for everyone. Number 12. Cormset. There are actually three mansions on this estate. A winter cottage, a summer cottage, and Cormset Manor, this grand Neo-Georgian mansion. The 1700-acre estate was previously owned by Marshall Field III. He was heir to the Marshall Field's department store fortune, an investment banker, and the richest man in the world at the time. He had purchased the land in 1921, to develop it into a self-sustaining English country estate. The project was completed in 1927, making it one of the largest estates on the Gold Coast, with facilities for every sport, except golf. It was a combination of country club, hunting preserve, working farm, and home, and even supplied its own water and electricity. What you see today is only a portion of Cormset Manor, as large chunks of the eastern and western wings were demolished in 1950. Field died in 1956, and his widow sold the estate to the state of New York to be used as a park for the public in 1961. New York renamed it the Cormset State Historic Park Preserve. Today, the buildings within the preserve are used for educational programs, while much of the land is maintained as a nature preserve with activities such as hiking, fishing, biking, scuba diving, birdwatching, horseback riding, skiing, and so much more. Number 13. The DuPont Guest Estate. This Georgian revival was built between 1916 and 1918 by Alfred I. DuPont for his wife Alicia. Sadly, Alicia died unexpectedly, and never got to see the finished mansion. And so shortly after its completion, Alfred sold the fully furnished, but never lived in home, to Frederick, and Amy Phipps' guest. The home remained in the possession of the guest family until 1972, when they sold it to the New York Institute of Technology. The school renamed the mansion after the famous Russian aviator, Alexander Peter Sevisky, a member of their board of trustees who was instrumental in the acquisition. Today, the bedrooms and parlors of the New York Institute of Technology de Sevisky Mansion have been converted to the school's offices. And they also use the building to host a variety of academic events throughout the school year. Though the mansion has undergone extensive updating, the school was sure to keep much of its original features. And thus during off-school hours, it offers a charming backdrop for weddings and other elegant events. Number 14. Quinder Hall. This distinctive 40-room French chateau, with great views of Huntington Harbor, was completed in 1912 for pharmaceutical magnate George McKesson Brown. Brown sold the house in 1939 to the Brothers of the Sacred Heart, who established a boarding school and summer retreat. They named the school in memory of the founder of the order, Father Andre Quinder. When the school closed in 1971, Suffolk County decided to purchase the property the following year. Today, the Suffolk County Parks Department uses the mansion to host weddings, soccer and basketball events in the converted gym, adult exercise classes, and as an art studio for a non-profit organization. And last, we have one more Georgian revival mansion for you. Number 15. The Child's Frick Estate. 
This three-story home was built in 1901 for politician Lloyd Stevens Bryce. However, in 1918, Bryce sold the estate to steel and coke magnate Henry Clay Frick, who purchased it, as a wedding gift to his son Charles Frick and his bride. Charles Frick named the home, Clayton, in memory of his childhood home in Pittsburgh, and his family lived there until his death in 1965. Nassau County purchased the estate four years later, and converted it into a museum, now called the Nassau County Museum of Art. Today, you can visit the museum to view their collection of 600-plus art objects spanning American, as well as European art of the 19th and 20th centuries. There are also 145 acres of grounds consisting of walking trails, and some of the most impressive formal and sculpture gardens you'll ever feast your eyes on. And that's it for the top 15 Gold Coast mansions of Long Island. So, which of these did you like the most? Which ones are you thinking of adding to your bucket list? Are there any other mansions you feel should have made this list? Well, we certainly hope we've inspired you to drop everything and make a beeline for the North Shore in order to experience some of these in real life. Anyway, if there's anything else you would like to mention about this topic, feel free to share it with us in the comments below. Furthermore, if you got any value out of this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and click on the bell icon so you never miss out on another video. With that said, we'd like to thank you for watching. And we'll see each other next time.